Hey everyone and welcome to part 13 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. In this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up a basic pause menu system. Now it's not going to be anything fancy or too special and we're not really going to be setting it up the original way that the Pokemon games made it out to be. So how they use just arrow keys to navigate through. I kind of want to simplify it for people who may be new to Unity or you know have have not programmed something like this before. Um, it's going to be a little bit more confusing working with each menu and sub-menu and just adding into the factor that if you're using arrow keys to scroll through each would make it even more confusing, especially when we're adding different items to these menus and whatnot. So scrolling through would be even more confusing for, for people. So I'm just going to simplify it. Just for this tutorial, we might be, be able to go back later and actually change it up to work like that but for now to make it easier for people to follow along um, we're just going to make it with buttons so it's going to be easier for everyone pretty much but yeah if you guys know how to set that up you can mod this out and set it up that way if you'd like but the first thing we're gonna do is create a new script for the pause menu itself and we're just gonna be separating it from all these other scripts so we can better organize it now, I already went ahead and set up the basics of it, so I will explain each part and let you guys know about that. So, the first thing that I did was create a variable is paused. Now, this variable, when it's true, is going to display um, our basic menu. So, from here, we're going to have to create submenus as well. So, when we click on one, it'll activate a submenu and we'll scroll, th scroll through that and whatnot. But we'll be covering each one in like a different tutorial, or I think that's how I'm going to set it up. Just because these systems, a few of them can be a little bit complex, including the indexing and all that. But yeah, so that's the basics of what this variable is going to be doing. So when that gets changed to true, so is pause equals true, that's, this is, is true without the adding the extras to it. But yeah, when that's switched over, it will display these buttons. So I pretty much just used a normal GUI button. Uh, we could add a texture to this if we really wanted to, but for now we're just going to simplify it and just use um, the default template for the button. So I can go over each one that we're going to be setting up. Index will be what monsters you've actually seen or encountered, and it'll display different stats and stuff like that. Monsters will be the monsters on your actual team. Bag will be all your items and whatnot. Character, just character stats and different stuff. Save, so you can pause the game and save it at whatever time that you want. Options, pretty basic, different option settings. Um, not really sure what exact options the Pokemon games have. I guess I can look into that a little bit more. Not sure if uh, like the text scrolling speed is faster or something like that. And then exit. So I guess you can push press that to exit, but we're also going to have a key bound to doing that as well. So what we're going to be using is if input dot get key down. So if we press a key down and that key being P, just to represent pause menu, you can change that to whatever key that you want. And then in here we're going to be doing is paused equals exclamation point is paused. Now what this piece of code does is it switches from one or the other. So let's say is paused is equal to, you know, true. Well then it'll switch it to false when we press P. So if it was false, then it would get switched to true and vice versa. This line of code is very helpful because you don't have to program out a lot of code to be able to tell, you know, is my pause menu open? Okay, then, you know, disable it or don't or whatever. Um, this is just an easy way to switch back and forth between those. So, that is our basic pause menu. We can go back into Unity real quick and check it out. Now, if you see, there's nothing currently, but if we go and press P, we have our pause menu. Now, we can click on each one of these, but it's not going to do anything. Pretty much because we don't have any of the code set up to work with that. So if we actually wanted that to work with the code, um, we could easily do something like this. 
or we can just add a debug.log and say, you know, bring up our console, just play. So if we press P, and we can click on all these, they won't do anything, but if we click on index, index submenu. So pretty much, if you guys haven't worked with on GUI stuff before, it's basic, whatever is inside of here, when you click this, will become active. You could also put different if statements in here as well, that'll work just like the update, but the only difference is, this code will only activate when we actually press down the button. So it's not being called a bunch of times. You can call different functions in here or whatever you guys want to do. So we could set up something simple just to get the submenu system working. Let's see here. It's paused. So we could do another if statement. But first we want to create a probably a new um, new submenu thing or a new boolean for that submenu. So we could call this index sub, maybe. We could also change this to numbers too or something different. But for now, I just want to show you guys the basic way that we're going to be setting setting this up. Now this may be changing in the future, but I just want to give you guys a brief idea on how this is set up. So we'll just comment this out, and this will be our index submenu one. Not really sure if there's if we're going to be including pages within pages. Um, I have to go back and actually look how a lot of that stuff looks when you go through each menu, but we'll come back to that. So so that we could do index sub equals true and that will enable this now we could just do something simple like take a GUI button again we're probably going to be using different labels and stuff for this as well but for now we just want to get something set up so instead of 10 we'll move this over let's say 100 and we can change the sizing of this just so we can get an idea. We can do 300 by 300 and label this index submenu. So for right now, this is just for show, nothing too special. We can do a debug.log and say clicked in submenu. So we go and press play, hit P, hit index, and we get this large pop-up window. Now we're also going to have to hide these if we do go in here, or I guess we can leave them up, it doesn't really matter. Since we're designing our own game based off of it, um, we can change up the things maybe we don't like or would like to see improved, and we could in the end leave this up if we really wanted to, and just make it so if we clicked a, a different one it would close all the other menus that could possibly open and open that new menu. But if we click on that, it says clicked in submenu. So we have a menu and a submenu there. And that's pretty much the basics of the inventory system so far. So like I said, we're going to be going over each individual one and figuring out how to set up each one of those. Another thing people are probably going to be asking is, what if I want my game to pause if, if I have moving characters or something? As long as you've timed it by time.delta time or some ty type of time, um, you'll be able to pause that object. If you've tried multiplying it by like just a number, it won't pause when it goes paused, I believe. Something like that. But if you wanted to change that, you can actually use time.timescale to change that. 
So let's see here. So yeah, I guess we could just put time dot. It's not really gonna. We're not gonna be able to notice much. Time dot time scale. I believe that's that's okay. This might have to be capitalized. Yeah, time dot time scale. Oh, and you just see it just stops our uh, our character from animating, so it do, it does pause the game, but we're still able to move around. And then if I try clicking, I get stuck in there and I can't move. So yeah, time is going to be something we probably should cover in a different tutorial because we may have to actually alter a few things just to make it so that we don't get issues like this. Because I've had issues with this in the past in time scale. And the way that you do your movement and everything like that um, can affect all of this. But for now, I just want you guys to get set up your basic inventory. Because we're going, like I said, we're going to be going through and coding each one of these different mechanics. So, not sure which one I'm going to cover next, but stay tuned, guys, for future tutorials.